Okay, this problem is also a single period model, but the difference between this one and the previous problem that we solved about single period is that here demand has a discrete probability distribution. So we have here a manufacturer that makes uh, t-shirts and he's making t-shirts um, specific for an event in Montreal. Uh, a shirt costs $10 and they are sending it during the event for $25. Now, after the event period, all unsold t-shirts can be sold on a, 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 at a discount store for $4. And this is our demand data, has discrete probability distribution. How many t-shirts should be produced? As we learned before, we need to find the optimal service level. And to find that, we need the stock out cost and the surplus cost. So stock out cost, lost profit. So it's equal to price minus cost. That's $15. What about the excess cost? What happens when we have a surplus? When we have a surplus, we're not going to lose all our production cost, right? That's why we always have that salvage value. So if it's a zero, that means we are losing everything. Otherwise, we are alleviating this uh, cost. So our cost is $10, and we are able to uh, reduce that by $4, which is our salvage value. Why? Because we can sell all unsold uh, T-shirts in that discount store. So our surplus is reduced from 10 if I did not have any salvage, down to $6. Okay, that's a good reduction. So the service level is equal to 71.4%. Now, unlike the case when a demand has normal distribution, when then we found Z and we plug it in the formula uh, Q equal mu plus Z sigma, here we don't have a normal distribution. I have a discrete probability distribution. And I found SL to be 0.714. Remember what's SL. It's the probability that demand is less or equal than Q. So I need to compare it with the cumulative probability. The cumulative probability of demand being less or equal than these discrete values. All right. So that's why I need to add here, okay, uh, a, a one more column that uh, determines the cumulative probability. Here we go. So let's just uh, make sure that you understand what's happening here. 0 0.15 was what? Was equal to the probability that demand was exactly equal to 400. But in order to compare my service level, which is probability that demand is less or equal, it's a cumulative. I need, I need to find the cumulative probability for every value of demand. So this 0 0.2 is what? This is the probability that demand is less or equal than 400. Which is what? Because demand can take only these very specific values, that means demand to be less or equal than 400 it are, is the case when demand is 400 or demand is 300. And that's why we sum them up. We sum this and that, and we get 0 0.2. And we do the same for all the others. And now we compare our service level. So we compare that one, and we see where it is where does it fit in my cumulative? And I see that it's in between these two values. And as advised in the previous, uh, when we uh, learn about this uh, model, that we always then opt to go for the quantity that give us a higher cumulative probability than the one that we found, all right? If it does not match exactly one. So that means we will go for 700, right? So will be our order quantity. Now, part B, if we, if the manufacturer produced uh, the quantity that we recommended, which is 700, okay, then the question is, what's the probability that he can sell all the t-shirts? So, this is even uh, much easier than the uh, the case when demand was normal because we can see exactly what's happening here with demand so you make 700 in which case you are able to sell all of these this is very logical you sell all of these is demand was 700 so you sold everything or if it was 800 
yes, it's true that there is a stock out, but you could sell the 700 and you had a stock out of 100, meaning that you could not satisfy the demand of 100 other customers. Okay, so here we go. The probability that selling all shirts is the probability that demand is greater than 700, which correspond to two cases when demand is 700 and demand is 800. So we add up their probabilities and we get 0 0.3. So you, see, you, you, you notice here that unlike the case when demand was normally distributed and the probability of selling all is 1 minus the service level, here it's not the case because SL is the probability of having a stock out. Right, and to find the probability of selling all, it's not equal to one minus zero point seven one four. Why this? Because this is not a continuous demand. We could not find the exact value of demand that give us this service level. Instead, what we did, we found a demand value that give us a cumulative probability higher than that. Okay, and that's what 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 explains why probability of selling all is not one minus the service level. Okay, so I hope that was clear for you. So, in this uh, practice problem five, we have a toy shop that sells a, a specific uh, product, which is a radio controlled car. The shop, of course, buys that from a supplier for a, a price of $5. So, we call that C for the cost for the shop. And demand happens at a rate of 40 cars per month. So that's our small d because we always reserve capital D for annual demand. The carrying cost is annually 20%. Here we go. This is I and ordering cost is $15 per order. That's S. They have already established an inventory policy, which and they order 60 units each time they place an order. The shop uh, opens 360 days a year. So, first question. They are asking us if this current ordering quantity of 60 is optimal. How can we tell? Uh, we have, in fact, two, um, two ways to do that. We either find the EOQ using the EOQ formula, and if it matches that 60, that means this is optimal, otherwise it's not optimal. Or what we can do, we can find the holding cost and the ordering cost for corresponding to 60 units. If holding and ordering are equal, that means 60 is optimal, otherwise it's not optimal. Let me go with the first method, where I'm going to find the EOQ. And you can see here now the parameters of our problem. Where remember here, demand is annual in the AOQ. Why? Because we are comparing annual ordering cost with the annual ordering cost. And this is how we came out with that equation. Now, so D, capital D is 480, ordering cost is 15, H is 9. How did we come out, come out with that? H is I times C, right? This is equal to. 0 0.2, which is I, times C, the cost, which is $45. And we get an EOQ equal to 40. So it's not 60, which means that the current order quantity is not optimal. Many, many stores, they decide not to go for the optimal quantity for different reasons. All right, part B. We need to find the inventory cost associated with the current order quantity, which is 60, right? So we know that the total cost is holding plus ordering. And as we learned before, we use that equation, whether it's optimal or not optimal. All what we do is to plug in the place of Q, the order quantity. So here the order quantity is 60. So it's 60 over two times H plus D over Q which is 60 times S. And we notice that these two are not equal, which is expected because 60 is not an optimal as we found in part A. So we have a um, annual holding and ordering cost of $390 per year. What savings can be achieved if the shop orders the optimal quantity? 
obviously to find to answer this question what we need to do is to find the total cost corresponding to the EOQ and then compare it to the total cost that we just found and the difference will be the saving so the total cost for EOQ is found to be 360 again here notice remember this is a very important uh, uh, property of the EOQ guys use it a lot to verify your answers these two are equal which means you have the right uh, uh, answers um, so we get 360 which means we have a saving of $30 now given that the lead time is six days what's the reorder point that's easy because here demand is constant it's known so we know that the reorder point is equal to D times L right um, so it's uh, D times L now L which is our lead time here we go this is L is six days but we cannot multiply that by the monthly demand or the annual demand because we have to have the same time unit right D is number of units per time unit times L which is in times and this is days so these time units should match so what I do I will convert uh, or I will I will find the, the daily demand so daily demand I will divide the monthly demand by 30 days all right so it's 1.33 cars per day and now I can multiply that by L and we get eight cars and this is our reorder point remember what does it mean the reorder point that means whenever you find out that what's left on your shelf are eight cars you immediately place an order that's the reorder point other than the cost what's the other benefit of ordering an optimal quantity what do you think all right I will give you the answer the optimal quantity remember was 40 while we are now ordering 60 so other than the savings of $30 that we found in previous parts what's the other benefit we need less space and, and space tells me is very important here remember we're talking about only one product and any store deals with thousands of products so any space that you can save for one product that would add up a lot for you okay so this is a very very important uh, uh, very important observation to make what's the cycle time for this period for this product sorry cycle time is equal to q over d that's for 45 days and finally how many orders are placed every year okay how many orders we know that from from the total cost uh, equation where we multiply the uh, the ordering cost by d over q why because d over q is the number of orders so that's it d over q is eight times